John Reed, JDOD. We got the early morning day two Sapphire shoot. I'm with Steve Lucas back in the chair. What's going on? It's awesome. I mean, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm in a great way. I'm just exhausted. You know, you yeah. get that like had 20 meetings yesterday, yeah. big keynotes. Sapphire is great. What are you learning so far? Well, what I learned so far was I really loved the uh, San Francisco 49ers NBA Under Armour session that Bill did. I mean, yep. uh, you know, Sapphire is always great. I just, I was telling somebody yesterday, I was dialed into that, you know, and maybe it's just because I'm the target market, yeah. I don't know. But I just, I loved it and I loved how we're trying to get the, the technology kind of conceptually out of the clouds, no pun intended and really make it humanistic and give it that human element. I, I think, you know, sports, it just does it for me. I'll be honest with you. I struggle because my cynical blogger analyst persona was giving way to my sports fanboy persona. And I think that's exactly what SAP yep. intended. Yeah, so, it was like right there. Yeah, absolutely. Plus James Brown on stage handling the business. It's yeah, awesome. That, that doesn't suck. So Steve, you talked yesterday about building a big data organization at SAP, which I described in a blog post this morning is sounding impressive, but impressively vague. So put some meat on the bone. What does that actually sure. mean? Well, so today we have a classic analytics organization that focuses on BI, dashboarding, reporting, EPM, GRC, all of those classic BI or analytics defined technologies. We also have a, a classic D&T organization, HANA, Sybase, uh, middleware, EIM, all of those integration tools and storage tools, and of course, HANA. And those are great businesses for SAP. They're doing well. But you know, you have to question yourself always, and you have to ask yourself, are we relevant in all the places that we should be? And you know, I, I've been talking with a lot of customers, and I gotta tell you, I was a little taken aback by a few comments from some customers recently saying things like, well, you know, big data, we're really not considering SAP, you know, and dot, You're dot, like, dot. what the heck? Yeah, and I just we're kind of, data? after yeah. I scooped myself up out of the, off the floor back into the chair, it was, uh, okay, clearly we need to be more relevant. And, and part of that relevance means getting focused, not just on the technologies from SAP, but I mean, there's Hadoop and NoSQL and all of these other classic big data associated technologies. I think we need more people that can speak those languages. I think we need more solution packages that, that go along with those. There's going to be some great announcements this week around HANA as well that uh, talk to that kind of big data community and integration with Hadoop and other things that are just going to be awesome. Um, so that'll be coming in the next service pack. The interesting thing is that a number of the startups in the HANA startup program that I've spoken with have sorted through some of these issues around how HANA and Hadoop, for example, can work together. So there is some not only thought leadership, but product developing around this. So it'd be interesting to see if you can scale that a little bit. Yeah, well, I met with a customer yesterday and, and um, you know, we always talk about things like running suite on HANA will enable transaction and, and unstructured data together. But, you know, how do you make that real? Well, here's how I think you make it real. We have a customer that is taking um, social commentary and news feeds and they're dumping it all into Hadoop. That's what they're doing. So highly unstructured, just putting it in the ocean called Hadoop. That's on the right hand. On the left hand, they're looking at running their business suite on top of HANA. Right. The, the, the question is, if, if I'm one of their customers, so they're the business, I'm the consumer, and I call them up and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm interested in one of your products. I, uh, that's like a golden moment. I just called them. I want to buy something. Right. The opportunity to maybe also sell me a second thing is right there. Right. If you can take my past purchase history, that's over in ERP, yep. Take my social commentary sitting over in Hadoop, marry that together. You actually might know what the second most likely item is that I might want to buy. But we've got all of those pieces and parts. They have to come together. That's a bit of a bit of big data, a bit of HANA, a bit of analytics. Yeah. But it's it's got to come together. Yep. You got some work to do there. That's interesting uh, vision, though. Now we got, uh, speaking of work to do. You you got. I guess it's a promotion. Well, I don't know what it is. You took your old job back into your new job, and everyone's going to want to hear about yeah. what you're going to do with analytics. It seems like analytics may need a little bit of fresh life. But what is your plan for analytics, and how does it fit into the other things you're doing? Well, you know, it broke my heart when I switched from analytics to yeah. D&T to just run that. And you broke some other hearts, too. I yeah, think. you yeah. know, but I mean, and, yeah. and uh, I think everybody kind of associates me with HANA. I, I, most people think I get paid every time I say it. Um, you know, so uh, th the reality is, is that analytics is where my heart lies. It's what I know. I mean, all of my formative years of my career were spent on analytics, BI, 
uh, EPM, GRC, et cetera. And, and um, so I have a, a deep passion there for it. And from my point of view, you can, for a moment, just throw HANA aside. You know, we have to be the number one analytics company in the world, period. And I think some huge growth areas for us. I mean, first of all, we have to lead in terms of stability of a BI platform. We have to be stable, broad, powerful, so we've got to do that. Number two, we've got to start leading on things like predictive. You know, the, the, there are co competitors out there that are kind of running away with it, and we've got great tools and technology. We've got to reinvigorate um, the, our whole visualization strategy. I mean, we've got some great tools with Lumira, the former visual intelligence. Yeah. The, the reality is, is that th there's, there's so much to do there. There's solutions. Uh, we've got to get our EPM solutions more tightly integrated with BW. We've got cloud there, and, and the list goes on and on. But uh, so I've got a to-do list about a mile long, and you know when we're prioritizing. But I would say it, the, the bottom line for me is um, we have to be successful in BI. And the number look, we're the number one company in the world on analytics. We got to lead like it. Right. Do you worry that you might get spread too thin, or is it a matter of finding? the right lieutenant who can kind of help fulfill the vision or how does that work from the leadership angle? I think it's more of the latter. I mean, I think, y you know, what's interesting is there's actually a number of people that uh, w have been with business objects before SAP and other right. companies that have I I as at least as much, if not more passion than I do for the business. And, you know, I think we need to give them the opportunity to step up and lead. Yeah, I do. I think there's just deep passion there, deep commitment for the business. So, so I would say you're probably going to see that very soon. Okay. And, and Steve, with, with analytics, it seems like one of the challenges, and it's not just SAP, but it's a lot of what you might call the legacy analytics vendors. It's almost like the way we talk about kind of legacy enterprise in a way, like, like analytics has changed so much the last couple of years to kind of these kind of fast line of business oriented purchases yeah. that, that are not IT specific. Yeah. Is that part of what you're addressing is just kind of how analytics is changing and how purchasing is changing? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. I mean, we went, I, I lived through the, the whole enterprise BI wave and it's kind of shifted back to very fast purchases, departmental, very centric, tactical yeah. in some ways. And it's not that people aren't thinking strategically, it's just that they don't want to spend 18 months setting up a BI enterprise solution. They want their answers, they want them now, yeah. they want high quality visualization, I want it on a mobile device, I want to be able to perhaps predict, not just look in the rearview mirror, you know, all of those things are in play. And absolutely, I mean, the number one thing that we've got to bring back to the organization, everybody says it, it's, it's overused, but we've got to be, call it nimble, agile, whatever, in our offerings, in our responsiveness to the market, in our social presence, one of the big things I'm going to be challenging the analytics team with is that our analytics management team at SAP has to have a quarter of a million followers on Twitter. So that's going to be their number one objective. Well, they're not going to be able to do that by blasting press releases, Steve. It's <laughs> going to be interesting to see what they come up with. Yep. So this is going to be, yeah, and, and they can't buy followers on Twitter. I know there's oh, a the service where you can do that. Followers. Yes. Yeah. It's like 1500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So how much time do you want before we come in and, and give you a report card on your progress? You want three months, six months on the analytics side? I would say no more than three months. Okay. I mean, at this point, if, if, if we're going to go fast, we got to go fast. Okay, so TechEd, you will give you a preliminary report, report card and do a check-in on this? I look forward to okay, it. Okay, sounds good. Well, listen, I hope you have a great week. Thank you. Take Same care. to you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.